and welcome everybody out there in YouTube and D&D land. Before we jump into the action, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps us out oh so very, very much when you do that. In addition to that, if you are interested in supporting the channel even further, you can consider becoming a member on YouTube where you will get benefits eventually, I promise. It's just currently I'm trying to figure out exactly what those benefits will be. In addition to that, if you want to support us a little bit more than that, but also gain some immediate benefits, consider joining our Patreon. Link to that is down in the description below. It gets you into our private Discord server, get to hang out with all of us, participate in many of our things. One thing that we are doing is karaoke tomorrow night. If you want to celebrate five years of me creating the new Embrace universe, join us. I mean, that's what we're doing. It's going to be off stream, so don't worry. We're all terrible at singing. It's going to be fantastic. We're doing it over Zoom, so you can join on in so long as you're already on the Patreon. Um, and if you're interested in joining any of our games, we do have open slots available. Be sure to reach out to me if you are interested in any of them through Patreon, through Twitter, anything like that, and I'll get you set up. Hello, players. Welcome back. Where last we left off, the party had arrived in New Haxon and picked up on a very <clears throat> tense militarization that this town in particular is beholden to. And after getting investigated and learning a little bit about... Uh, oops. Oh, God damn it! I hate you. Um, after going ahead and setting up... Uh, after arriving in New Haxon, you all successfully got patted down and then found your way over to a little shop, a little uh, kind of inn of sorts. Not really, kind of a bar, just an open patio bar where you sat down, began discussing, and noticed a very odd reacting individual who rolled a natural one on their stealth check to sneak away um, while you guys were having this conversation. You forced them <clears throat> to come back and hang out with you all as you then discussed a very possible way that uh, they could be forgotten about if they tell you everything that they know about what you all were discussing, the true king. And apparently there's a group of people referred to as the Hand that they are um, <clears throat> kind of, uh, what do we say? worshipping an aspect of this true king that all of you seem to be curious about. Before all of this, of course, you came across an individual that Celia recognized as a fellow uh, bard of sorts um, that immediately put them into a more trusting situation of one another uh, named Reese. And Reese, of course, seemed to share that same mingled dream with several of you inside of this. Boom, name drop. We did it. And now you all are deciding what you're going to do with this information as the, uh, the wind scribe comes back. Reese, you recognize him. He moves on in here, a tiefling individual with jewelry that just is pierced all over their body and dangling off of them. Uh, open shirt, no real type of armament on their body whatsoever. And last time you attempted, you counted 16 piercings from the top of their head down to what you can see. Um, and they walk back in and see you hanging out with everybody and just smile. Well, hey there. Oh, what was their name? Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> this one is... Uh, tycoon. Was your break restful? Very. Um, unfortunately, we got a little bit of shocking news out there. <laughs> But here you go. Oh. The weather. Yes? Oh, no. Reese is just... Reese doesn't even... Like, Reese is still looking at this tiefling. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to count they, piercings again. They hand you a piece of paper. And you're like, oh, there's a new one right in between the fingers. Like, <laughs> apparently. There you go. Perfect. That should be everything within the next 24 hours, and uh, thank you for your considerable donation. 
Hey. Looks at everybody else. Looks at you, Celia. Hey. And then just hey. heads back over to their corner. Hello. So over under on how many piercings you think they have. I'm thinking it's going to be somewhere around 20. Probably more if you count. Uh, yeah. If you count the ones between his fingers. Yeah, it should be more. <laughs> it should be more. I think it's around 39. 39. I think. <sighs> <sighs> Unless you open his shirt fully, you'll never know. It's true. You hear Ty from across the tavern. 38! Good guess! I rolled a percentile die, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just give him a thumbs up. One day I hope to see them all. Alright, so, let's see the weather. <laughs> and I'll open up that, that paper and share it with the group. Uh, roll me 3d9. 3d9? Yeah. Okay. So a normal D10 then, because zero to nine. Nice. Sixteen. Uh, eight. Or eight, one, and seven. Um, out towards the further west. There is an encroaching colony of toxic fungus that has been rolling down the mountains into the area. Um, that's going to be fairly uncomfortable for anybody who has to go westwards in that direction. Uh, yeah, toxic fungus colony at the west. Go ahead and type that down. Um, the earth moats seem to be moving around towards the north considerably more at this point in time and a few new ones have recently erupted which means they're moving um which is very dangerous because some of these chunks are up to 60 feet in diameter and they can crash into one another with like large explosions um if they just so happen to move around those areas but that's to the north so if you're heading that direction that's what you might run into um and then you rolled a seven right <laughs> the static area is going to be swept over by some rust rain as in just moves across the location at some point tomorrow which is very bad for anybody wearing non-magical metal equipment on their person. Um, typical individuals, they're perfectly fine. But uh, that's why you have that one spell in particular, just in case. So, detection. these things seem fine. Uh, we're moving north. And unless we want to wait two days and then get more weather... We should do it soon before this rain comes. Mm. I wonder... Yeah, the rain will be a problem. I don't know if the rest of you are prepared for it. Well, I mean, if the weather is against us, we could always um, stay in town for a little bit and look into this uh, coconut cult. Oh. Regarding the rain, I bought a big cloak specifically for this situation. Hmm. Kreef, please mute while eating. Thank you. So, um, I mean, I, I've got all the time on my hands. Are we staying in town for a bit? Searching this out while we wait for the weather to get better? Or are we going to risk it? I have um, this uh, feeling that this hand, that uh, this hand is worshipping, maybe what we are actually looking for uh, up north. It has everything to. Everything leads to that, so there's no way we can be better prepared 
than if we actually know what we are going to face. And if we go out and integrate and find out this cult, maybe we can find out more information before we jump into the lion's den. Hmm. I'm wondering if the good weather, or better weather than whatever this mess is, benefits them as well. Maybe we can take advantage of the bad weather. Yeah, probably. It's a double-edged sword after all, so it could be beneficial for us as it is for them. Do do you think they cancelled their ceremony on account of rest rain? Yeah, if they do it indoors, probably not. Mm. We have, um, well, the way I see it, we have several options here. We could, of course, just travel out and see what we find, but... The guy said they had at least two operatives here in, in town. The uh, mm. flat-nosed lady with uh, three fingers and uh, a Goliath uh, man of some sort. Mm-hmm. Um, well, the Goliath hasn't seen, been seen in three weeks. There is a, a nerdy half-elf with a bandaid on his face and apparently the human with their box. Right. Leading the so, group. Well, I mean, if we manage to track down one of them, we could, uh, well, we could, of course, try and shadow them for a little bit, see if they lead us back to the rest, or we could go up to them and say that, uh, hi, we want to be recruited into your crazy cult, or something thereabouts. Yeah, sleuthing Uh, around for it would be annoying since the guys are with them as well so ty will whistle at you all from across the open area talks of conflict off the premises please thank you right Hmm. oh well we could always take a breather and buy some supplies to prepare all of you for the weather here at least since a poncho could easily cover up most of your metallic wares on the surface unless you take it out and i assume we all probably want some magical things i don't know how much your budget is but there's a variety of interesting knickknacks and artifacts here for sale if you're willing to just walk around. So, you mean you can purchase augments here? Is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, they're made here very often. Also, one thing I forgot to bring up since it affects this party directly, um, I am going to institute a new rule in the augmentation system. If you have a spell scroll that is just imbued with a specific level of spell of a specific class, you can use that in place of being the specific spellcaster for crafting your augment. Mm -hmm. So, because this party no longer has a high level intelligence caster or wisdom caster, I think this is the great great time for me to experiment with this. So if you need to make items, you still can. You just need to purchase scrolls to do it as well. It's a bit more expensive, but that's what happens when you can't do it yourself. Charisma party. Yeah. At least you can talk down the shop owners. <laughs> oh, goodness. What do you hey, think? I'm that, uh... to... oh, sorry, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. What do you think uh, those coconut cultists would do with a... um, And Reese will point between him and Celia. A couple of uh, people like us. (laughs) They found out. Just a casual uh, flick of the fingers at the neck, aka... If we're lucky. Mm -hmm. I mean... I've joined worse things, I suppose, for the trying to find information, but this seems a little risky, huh? Well, from my experience, 
anything that labels itself as a cult is always a bad idea and mm. something very well steer clear away from mm, yeah you know i don't actually like that they're so sort of into the the guards here to seem like it should be separated a little bit right eh, people Seems... have their own interests and mm. as usual money talks one money way or another talk. money and power and money new hexer has his own <laughs> New Hexen has his own the strong eats the weak rule, so... Mm. Money may talk, but tyranny will always fall. You know, <laughs> that could be part of the reason also why they asked us uh, when we arrived about the uh, religious paraphernalia or iconography we might have. Mm -hmm. Maybe... Well, uh, if, best of this... putting it away from plain sight. Yes, but, um, hmm. well, I mean, if we want to get in touch with this uh, cult, then could be a way to make ourselves uh, bait, as it were, and uh, have them fish us up. Yeah, and we can discuss it while we're walking, assuming if you guys wish to purchase anything, since continuing this any longer would probably get us more than a, than a stink eye on most other patrons here. Right. Mm, yes. Yeah. Fries <clears throat> is going to go over to a clothing shop and see something that he likes in the window and then just use the glamour aspect of his armor to change it into that item. What is your command word? <laughs> yeah. Um... I think it's actually. Oh, yeah. I suppose it needs a command word. Um, you could go with the static one, which is always fabulous. Mm. Uh, voila! That's the one. I like voila. <laughs> to be honest, uh, voila, and you're wearing a completely different outfit now. <laughs> I like that. Just walk away. Oh, convenient. The shop owners around here fucking hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely need to get me one of those. <laughs> Best augment in the I entire game. I know, right? Uh, I assume the rest of them want to find an augment, kill and grieve. Why do you want to find an augment? Nah, I'm just asking them if they want to find an augment or they want to just purchase random supplies or. Well, can anything. we get uh, spend like a little bit of time and just walking around to see what sort of augments are easily available and if we can purchase them for a reasonable price? You can certainly try. Uh. So. How are you going about this? Are you just walking around looking for anything that might be nice, that might be for sale, or are you taking a different means to try to find what you're looking for? What do you mean by different means? <laughs> I mean, there's a rogue in the party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> Thieves can, but a rogue can. Um... Exactly. <laughs> There is, there is, so I don't know if you guys are looking, uh, looking for something. There is something that might interest me, and that is a Stornad Augment, which is a level 2 Augment of Ace. This is something that can be casted standard, because Ace is a third level spell, and there is a stuff that in the Augment, like, you can just say, I created. Hmm. So what yeah. way are we going about finding this? That's the same question we're on. Uh, well, I'm uh, okay, that's way. I'm going to ritually cast uh, detect magic and walk around in the market district if there is one. And uh, there is. Yeah, home in on where the most magical items are. <laughs> okay. Uh, go ahead and roll me an investigation, please. 
Okay. Hmm. Not bad. You, you said well, you're doing it's... detect magic, though, so not the plus yeah, one. Yeah, so it's not guidance. Yeah. 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 So 23. <laughs> As you're walking through, you do come across a couple of bazaars that seem to have magic in the back of their shop not really on the front area accessible to people. And as you kind of like start tilting your head in, the shopkeeps always like move directly over in front of you. And you're interested in something. <clears throat> well, it seems to me that you might be familiar with something called uh, augments, right? Right. So, uh... Which, uh, which ones do you have av available? And uh, I'm sure we can find a reasonable deal. We don't have anything like augments in this shop in particular. However, we do have a couple of other choice things you might be interested in. For instance, do you want yourself a uh, non-absorbent poncho? Sure. That would be... 100 gold. <laughs> All right. How many of those, uh, these do you have available? I can get you as many as you really need, honestly. Enough for a small fleet, at least. Just might take me a little longer than right now. Right, I see. If you uh, ask him I'll right take... now, roll me a d6. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. If you ask me right now, I got one. Right, well, I'll <laughs> take that one, then. 100 gold. Deal. And congratulations, you have a poncho. It weighs 15 pounds. Yes, it is heavy, but it is non-absorbent. Absorbent, which means right. it will not take on any of the rust. The problem with wearing a uh, cloak is it will absorb the rust rain and then seep into your armor and equipment. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right, so... Nah. Uh... Do you need a little bit of water on your travel? Well, sure. But um, apart from the mundane, well, halfway mundane things, what sort of magical items do you have available? I just asked you. You're interested in a cup of water. What if it was also wine? Holds up a canteen. Uh, well, that is a very good... Uh... Five gallons well, my... a day, any drinkable liquid, well, mayonnaise uh, included. A demonstration is in order, I, I, uh, I would say. Of course, good money, always worth it. Pulls out a couple of cups and pours water into one and then pours wine into the other. I'll taste both of them. The water certainly tastes like water. I mean, not like the, you know, fresh, crisp, snow-covered mountaintop water or anything like that. It's just, it's water. Um, and the wine tastes like what you would assume a poor person would think good wine tastes like. Like box wine. But like mm, yeah. high-quality box wine, you know? Yeah. Maybe some Yellowfoot. Mm. Uh, it's all doing a pinch, I suppose. Um, so how much do you take for this, then? This one is going to run you a little bit pricier, of course. In this area, you got to survive how you got to survive. 250 gold. Right. It's 10 gallons a day. Hmm. Yes, well, I will have to get back to you on that. Uh, and sure thing. Check with my... Accountant, as it were. What about a magic bean? Hmm? Bean, yes. Yeah. What does that do? Depends what you do with it. Well, where has it been? You think you're funny, don't you? I do. So, well, okay. sometimes. Somebody no, has to. Somebody well, has to. My jokes are more a quantity than quality, for the most part. No. So. He pulls out a small pouch and pulls out an itty bitty little looking lima bean. Well, you can either throw it on the ground somewhere and it will explode with a little burst 
a fire. Or you can plant it and after a minute see what the fuck happens. Not quite sure what happens. A lot of things, apparently. Hmm. But I and tested the exploding that, pot. For the single bean, you're looking at about uh, 200 gold. It could be anything. When you plant hmm. it. I see. Well, so, and you said 200, 200 also for the uh, wineskin, right? Thought my lips said 250, but I think if you buy both, I could do 200 on. Right, so, uh, and even 350 for the both of them. Then. And even 400, you mean? doesn't seem to me like you have too many customers here, so... We get plenty enough, no problem. Not to mention, you, you need to get this stuff to survive out there, which I'm assuming you're heading towards, aren't you? Hmm. Well, who knows? Let's see, uh, let's say a 380, then, then. Roll of persuasion. <laughs> Sorry, boss, but... No chance that I think you're going to be a repeat customer. We're going to stick to 400. All right, you have enough. to understand, if there was an investment of thinking you'd come back, maybe. Well, you might be surprised. Hopefully. Hmm. I well, love repeat I'll be back customers. In, uh, back in a, a little while then. Sure. And I'll go back to uh, investigate. I'm not sure who's who's uh, actually carrying the bag of holding with our party loot and stuff. Good question. Who are you going to trust with the bag of holding to watch it? Probably Rurik. <laughs> Rurik. Fine. <laughs> and Rurik's just holed up in that same shop talking to everybody about, you know, how they could be better people and, you know, how it's really worth it to be a better person. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> if you if you need money, you just run past Rurik. Hey! Hi! <laughs> But anyways, right, uh, was anybody going with Kyle? Not me. I'll I'll go with Kyle. I think I might be able to help find uh, what he's looking for. Very well, Reese. You notice very quickly that Kyle is not really looking in the shops, but on the outsides of them for particular bits of. Uh, signatures markings things like that and kyle you begin to discern the location of a potential fence in this area a quaint little tiny espresso shop they sell some basic pastries and espresso and you discern that this might be where a good fence might be available in town who could more than likely point you in any direction you need to go Is there any markings to uh, around like the, the area to specify who I should talk to within the shop, specific message I need to, to say? They usually don't do stuff like that. Usually you have to use your thieves can't to see if anybody recognizes the language to get in contact with them. Okay. Um, I walk in and start babbling stuff in thief cans. Um, a, a, a message about bananas and and uh, bananas. How do you, how do you call, uh, how do you pronounce that in English? Bananas, B A N A N A S. Yeah, bananas. I know, but this this one I just wrote. Pineapple. Uh, pineapple. Yeah. All right. I don't. Know. This is a French word for pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Pineapple. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sure. I, I was just trying to say, and uh, like, I, I just, it just uh, didn't didn't feel correct. Um, <laughs> you so, walk in the shop. Hi, sir. I would like a pineapple, uh, if you have any. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, you come inside. The two of you sit down at the table, and Reese. I mean, this looks like a typical establishment that might have access to things like this. Um, and of course, both of you are given a shot of espresso 
and a small biscuit. And for all of you American folks, we're going with the British biscuits, which are sweet, savory, and delicious. And of course, uh, after he hands those over to you, uh, that'll run you about 20 gold, sir. Just the coffee or access the ananas, the pineapples? That's thieves <coughs> can't for. You have to pay to talk. So if you want to talk to somebody, you have to show you're serious. 20 gold. Yeah, 20 gold is from my pocket. Thank you very much, sir. They tuck it into their pouch and go back over, and uh, a few moments later, you see a uh, half-orc woman just moves on inside and sits at a table with their back over towards you, and uh, they're given a cup of espresso. They reach across your table and pluck your cookie and put it on their table. But you're new to town. What are you looking for? Hey, looking for <sighs> some, uh, what I would call it, augments. You're looking for good quality magic then, huh? Yeah. Are you looking for anything in particular or are you interested in inventory? Uh, there is something I'm looking for, but, uh, I would be curious to know your inventory. Well, right now we have some good quality augments at our disposal. Uh, just things to sturdy you up a little bit. Make sure you don't bump into too much trouble out there. And if you do, it's a little harder for them to get to you. We're also currently in possession of a handful of different uh, zappy bits, frosty bits and uh, releasing bits, if you're looking for any of those. And I think we currently have at our disposal uh, a couple of, how do I put this, explosive components. They take a deep sip of their espresso. So in a, <clears throat> sorry, sorry, just to, so I understand. In, in mechanical way, like what augments did you, did you say, like zappy bit? I, I, I think it's like lighting damage. That, uh, so they have the shrapnel augment, which is rare. Um, okay. They have the zap augment. Uh, they have the releasing augment. And they have a couple of quality augments currently. And quality is... Plus one plus AC one and AC saves. And saves. Only into armor. Uh, what quality? quality like I said, one, crazy plus, plus one. Plus they said good okay. quality, not great. <laughs> well, there is there is great, oh. super great then. Although because there is a very rare. Uh, uh, I need... Okay. Well, how much would it would be the quality one? Like I think of a couple of people wanting it. Were you saying something, Reese? Uh. Uh. I'll I'll let I'll let this question go first. I'm trying to think of a way to word it. Okay. Well, the quality ones. If you're looking for one of the two of them, <laughs> we're looking to get rid of them for close to about eight hundred a piece. But if you end up getting both of them, we'll say a solid 1500 for a first-time, potential last-time customer. Okay. Uh, that's good to know. And Well, did, uh, did it didn't show up on the inventory, but would you be... Would you happen to be in position of some... Uh, Spell holding augments? Not currently, but if you're looking to have one made for you, depending on what you want inside, or if you can put it in yourself, we might be able to set you up a little bit. Hmm? And how much would that cost me? 
to be set up that way. <sighs> Depends which way you want to do it. Do you have the spell you want to put into it first? Or do you need me to find someone who can do that for you? Yeah, sadly I don't. Have the spell, so, I mean. So if you need somebody to put it in there for you, are we talking a decent little party trick or something a bit more actively good? Something active. I want to run and strike fast. Well, if you need us to gather up the creature in order to do it, and you can give us an exact date, you'll be around after the point that we find the creature, of course. We're looking at 2,400 gold. And it depends on what the spell is, even if I could find an individual to do it. But I can start looking around for you if you put your deposit down of 1,000 now. Listen. What if um, I now take uh, this couple of quality uh, gems uh, for me and my group and you just start the research. I might have next time I come around the necessary creature and maybe even magical assets to uh, do it. So if you can just uh, point me towards someone who might have a scroll of this kind of uh, capability or who might know this spell, uh, this uh, will would already be uh, quite um, emphatic from you. My time and my knowledge is valuable. If you want it, you gotta pay me for it. As much as I like doing good business, of course, you still need to pay me if you need me to find an individual who has that spell already proposed. But if you're looking for a specific scroll that has it, well, you might be a little SOL on that one. We don't really get a whole lot of scrolls in these parts. They mostly sell them directly to the garrison. Well, um, what about how the research alone would cost? <laughs> Why would I give away my valuable secrets to you? To be that a returning like a... customer. Oh, well, if you'd rather go with a different choice, feel I'm, free. I'm not... The pixie gals are quite amusing if you want to deal with any of them and of course you can always is, go with the hands if you really want to risk that business i i i mean i didn't mean i didn't mean that i don't want this knowledge now i just want to be prepared in the case where that when i return you would have this knowledge i 200 I'm gold and i'll it. ask around town to see if anybody has it 200 gold and I'll locate someone in town if there is someone to be located. Mm -hmm. And will it be uh, taken out from the fee of the given augment? Of if course not. Permission? Of course not. But well, you're asking for something special, boy. There needs to be a special amount of treatment, right? I do get it. Though... I don't understand why I would have. Well, all right. Uh, he's just been eating. Right, he's just been eating his biscuit like <laughs> he gets popcorn watching this transaction go down. Will you help me for fuck's sake? <laughs> Welcome to Hi, the party. <laughs> uh, I'm not charismatic. You're the one who <laughs> yeah. talk, who, 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 who sweet talk people. I can't do it. I know. I, I know wasn't this. sure. I know this now. I didn't know this before, and now I know. Yeah. <laughs> also, also, it's I obvious. didn't know if it's very. Also, obvious, I didn't yeah. know if uh, he dragged us along with him. So, well, I with, asked who went along, and Reese yeah. was the only one who spoke up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Sorry. go ahead. 
Celia, did you want to be there? You're muted if you're talking. All right, they didn't want to be there. Go ahead, Reese. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, what is it exactly that you're asking for? I need to... Uh... I mean, this is a mage city, which is the, and this is probably the best place we have ever find any kind of um, magic shenanigans, and I don't want to miss you. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, and you're looking for the, the haste augment, yeah. yeah? Except right. if you can already cast it, if you know it, that's perfect. No, I, I don't, unfortunately. I, I've got no idea how to do that. Um, but hold, hold on one second. Um, uh let's earn some good <laughs> let's earn some goodwill here um do you want me to switch with you do you want to sort of serrano de bergiac this what do you want to i'm perfectly comfortable sitting where i'm sitting while you two are having your conversation mm. we don't want anybody to know we're going to be seen together do we of course not at all i was just asking for can i get another biscuit over here and um reese will pay another 20 gold as a show of good faith for her time. The the worker comes over and takes the gold and uh, replenishes you a biscuit and fills both of you up with another shot of espresso as okay. well as her. And she gets a... And, of course, she gets a biscuit. <sighs> so what is it that you're looking for, lad? Uh, well, my friend here is looking for something that will make him go very fast. <laughs> he likes I to. Yes. Um, so we're willing to pay you for your time um, in doing this. I could say that, that we could absolutely get you some repeat customers. I'm with a very, very... Um, we'll call them a happy organization that honestly we're looking for footholds in places like this there's not a lot uh of us uh of us here so that i've noticed and i would love to start establishing something here roll me a persuasion sure <laughs> not, not great. It's just an 11. Unfortunately, I can't bardic inspiration myself. Should have yeah. been bardic inspiration. Not yet, you, at but least. Yeah, not yet. Well, as much as I like the prospect of connecting with new organizations moving into town, I would need a bit of exclusivity when it comes to the acquisition of goods, of course. Absolutely. That's exactly the, the way that I was thinking, too. And, and your uh, business is very smiley, would you say? Uh, well, can't keep a grin off my face. <laughs> I thought I smelled one of you around here. That's the gold. That's a very particular scent. Um, this is something that I could forward to them as a potential. If you wanted to reach out a little bit more. You still pay the 200 up front. Of course. But. The Muddy Biscuit is going to be your primary source in this town. Muddy Make sure biscuit. they're fully aware of that. I can set the roadmap, like I said. They're hardly to be seen out here yet. And you can help us change that a little bit. Um. That's just what my friend wants. I actually have a different question for you. Well, let me finalize the deal on how sure. it will work. You still have to pay the 200 up front, but it will All be right. deducted from the 2400 for the final product. Ah, uh, okay. I understand. Yeah. So it's a down payment. Yeah. And that's just to locate somebody who can do it. The 24 yeah. is what you would pay to have them do it for you after they find a creature, kill the creature, bring it into town, find the gem, bring the gem, and then commission them to spend a week crafting it. Of course. And and what's the creature that we need to... Sorry, I just... 
Frames uh, in one ear, out the other. Yes, it's a CR 11 or higher. But oh, they can take so care no, of that. They're... That's what you're paying for. Yeah, but yeah. It's a I rare also... augment. It's a rare augment. It is a yeah, rare Yeah, but Gerald, so if, if I read correctly, the fixed augment table, it's any humanoid in CR 6 to do the one, first one, and then it just the uncommon, uncommon stage and a uh, a amnetis value at six hundred doesn't specify a CS eleven creature to do the seven level second level. Yeah, good point. However, where you are, you're not running into creatures below CR six to begin with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But so if, if I can, my if point you is can maybe... get a creature and bring it here, you didn't convey that. But if you can do that, that would definitely lower the price. Yeah. This is this is this was the. Sorry, it's my, my English. This is one of the whole point of the conversation is that take the time now to, to get the information. And when I get That's back, I might have some stuff to uh, lower the end price. Yeah. Okay. 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 So would you be needing an amethyst? Uh, we'll be needing an amethyst because we don't have one yet, though we might okay. find one. Where are we going? So, if you are still needing the amethyst and you still need the lower level one, and they still need to find the individual, twenty four hundred is actually kind of on par because you need a yeah. six hundred, uh, sixteen hundred GP amethyst to even begin thinking about this. <laughs> let alone you have to pay the spellcaster a week of downtime. Yeah. I mean, like so. that's that's entirely fine. Like it. Okay. Yeah. So it's they'll, just, they'll want take the, the deal. They'll take the deal. Nice. So 200 GP as a down payment for this. Mm -hmm. And when you get back, if they find who they're looking for, that'll be another 2200 and wait a week and they'll get it done. Yeah. That's all on you, because I do not have 200 for your thing. <laughs> I, I have, I have what, what, we, what we need for Perfect. That. Um... And I will also take the um, uh, two quality plus one uh, augments. For 1,500. For 1,500, yeah. Yep, total. I, 15 total. Yeah. Okay. So I, I take you. the 200 from my stuff and the 1,500 from the party loot. If it's well, for put... you guys. Is that cool, everybody? I assume since it's going to the other two in the party, so you know, like <laughs> I can only assume. Yeah. All right. We got uh, beans. We got deals. Yeah. And wine. All righty. Uh, beans and wine, or I water, do, but wine. I do want to ask them about one thing that I I'm personally interested in, and I have sure. no money for. <laughs> so this is fun. Um, and and no one more thing on yeah on on my end, I'm actually very interested in um. You, you live here. The weather is um, interesting, to say the least. And I... I heard that you have things to zap. Do you have anything to help with the zapping? Not the zapper, but the zappy, so to speak. You're looking away to uh, not feel the effects of the electric wind so much. I enjoy uh, not getting electrocuted on a daily basis, well... actually. Luckily, if you don't wear anything overly metallic, you should be perfectly fine. Or at least mm. keep it wrapped up in leathers and, you know, nicer quality cloths, and it should be all right. Uh, as for avoiding it altogether, I suggest get yourself somebody walking around in very heavy metal, and it all goes towards them, preferably. But with the winds themselves, you want to be careful about making any ranged movements inside of there. That's when mm. things get a little squirrely for you. Interesting. We did it, guys. Yeah, you need a cut. You need a conductor, Warwick. We need a. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, I'm. I'm thinking about like doing a Ben Franklin type of thing, putting something mm. on a levitate because I have the spell levitate, and then we can put a string uh... and put hang on, like a metal thing from it. I mean, that would certainly help. But you need to talk catch to an the artificer. String on fire. Yeah, but... you need to talk to an artificer for that, not, yeah, not yeah, a, yeah. Uh, a, a, a dealer. <laughs> of course, of course. I was looking for something that granted like uh, resistance and were, um, uh, 
Yeah. Oh. See, oh, that's you what want I'm talking resistance. About. Yeah. Okay, they can. Yeah. Not the Zephyr, well, but the Zephy. <laughs> if you're looking specifically to get something like that, I can put out a work order for it. Though the amount of time it'll take to get here, not sure if you still need it after that. Oh, that's fair Things enough. like that are a bit more volatile to create. So, but if you're willing to pay for it, I can put out the bounty for it and just take my cut at the top. I'll get back to you on that. Uh, we are short on time and about to be full of lightning, so. <laughs> Anyways, you can leave your coin in your cups after you're finished drinking them. And your items will be dropped into your pockets when you're round the corner. Mm, perfect. Thank you. Of course. We'll be seeing you around. Well, Kale, that wasn't that bad. I hate talking to people. I prefer talk to books. I don't talk back. <sighs> oh, I see what you Yeah, yeah, I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, I assume you walk around the corner and Kyel, with your passive, you do pick up somebody who moves past you, gives you a quick wink and puts three large gems into your pocket with a sleight of hand. Nice. Yeah. So you remove the 1500 GP, another 200 GP, and then you're all good. Why three gems? Because two you... you... Oh, sorry. One. Sorry, two. two gems. Yes, that you, is correct. You almost got away with three gems. Then God you said it. something. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I don't know what would be the... I don't know what kidding. would be the third one, so... <laughs> yeah, I forgot. She, she sorry, has a, a shrapnel a augment. <laughs> Damn. This is why we don't get... We don't get the book one to do transactions. We don't get free stuff. <laughs> that was just a joke. Don't do that. Excuse me, <laughs> sir. <laughs> I think you dropped this. Hey. <laughs> now I want to just play as a nice rogue who reverse pickpockets people. Like just puts reverse coins in their pockets, everybody. Uh, I'm shy. Good. And I don't really want to talk to anybody and give them charity. But here. Just... <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, do you want to say, Celia, what were you doing? I mean, originally I wanted to say just following one of them, but my internet fucked out, so I I missed out like half the earlier conversations the there. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, if you're looking to nah, make a fine. purchase, um, they do have a zapped augment and a releasing augment as well as a shrapnel augment still for sale. Uh, I mean, I don't mind the augments as much since I have like, uh, what do you call it? Most of it already. But okay. yeah, if, if it is so, since for the proofing, uh, what do you call it? Non-absorbent glue, I probably already have, uh, have it in my small home here, the dorm home. I have oh, to double you mean check, the, the poncho? Yeah. Okay, the non-absorbent poncho, then remove 100 GP. That's what it yeah, would run uh, like. I have to double check, though. Like, Would the artifact researchers here be affiliated with the garrison? Sometimes. Uh, most of the time, they're related to the Empire. Um, and then there's also private collectors, private dealers, private militia. You know, sometimes. All right. Uh, then I'll be nearby Creve and just wait for everyone together before visiting the one that one of my uh, friends have. Wonderful. Bink! Yeah. Everybody's back together. Hey! Mm -hmm. You guys did some shopping. Hey. So, are you meeting up at the same want? place? Thai shop? <laughs> nah. The guy's going to cry if he keep doing conspiracy theories in his place again. Hey, so long as you don't talk about conflict, he don't care. <laughs> he wants out. He doesn't want in. Mm -hmm. So but you yeah. meet up at a different tavern. Mm -hmm. Let's call it the Low Life Tavern. 
E. Bing! You're all together. So, hey, there you go. So I assume you all have everything you wanted? Yep. Yes, I got this. Here, uh, Kriv. I, uh, I, uh, I bought that for you. I thought that might uh, interest you. Uh, oh. You bought a nice armor and you gave me the, the old one. So I think that this might suit you. And I give you the quality augment. Oh, hmm. well, thank you very much. I haven't been able thank to you, find um... anything uh, fitting for the my new armor yet. So Boop. I put it into one of my slots. <laughs> All right. Over the next hour, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. just takes you a uh, third level spell slot. All right, yeah. It takes a yeah. spell slot to put an armor into something? Yes, it does, but it's not third. It takes you a first level spell slot to put it in. Okay. And a short rest. It's just to make it so there is consequences for quick swapping in the middle of a day for combat and stuff, yeah. you know? You have to think about it. Mm -hmm. So, where would be our uh, our next destination, anyway, specifically? Well, that's up to. Um, still need to decide if we're going to go and try to get a head start on reaching the north and finding the hand, or we can go to the garrison first, try to get information on it. Well, or try to join yeah. them. Which I just don't yes, like I was that. curious I don't like that about since if we're going out of town, are we going west, south, north? North. North. North to I, uh, anywhere met specific? One of the, one of the yeah. shopkeepers had this uh, poncho thing that would be very useful. He said he might be able to get more, but he only had one in stock. So it's uh, supposed to protect against the rust and uh, mm -hmm. I believe also the electrical weather thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those kind of, yeah, the non observant clothing are pretty popular here since it's the easiest way to protect yourself. You know, the fence that we talked to um, offered that we just wrap things in leather, I think that'll work for both things. Mm hmm. Well, rather than yeah. spend money on some. Well, the poncho Oak. is the poncho is more for you to wear over your per own person. The leather wrappings are focus more on your equipment since mm -hmm. it's oh. easier that way. I like nice things wrapped in leather. <clears throat> of course. <laughs> I can. Uh... I look at Celia. <laughs> <laughs> I can work uh, some stuff on on leather. I I I worked a bit on uh, how to uh, to do leathery stuff. I can. Uh, I could provide to you for you, Crave, if you have a specific inquiries. Uh, well, I don't have any uh, special needs at this point. Well, I have some, but... Um, so, I mean, the decision we need to make is, do we want to investigate these ends in your accent, or do we just want to uh, travel up north and uh, find what we might find? Uh, I do believe the our unnamed informant gave us um, at least a name of uh, like a geographic location in the north that they were being taken to. Fortunately, I did not take the specific note the on rest. that one. Yeah, the, so we, the we know we know where we're going. Um, Which is an expansive landscape out there. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but oh, just yeah. not specifics, so we might need to do a little bit of well, I'd say espionage. Yeah, I'd say it's better to stay here maybe one or two days extra and do a, try and investigate as much as we can instead of heading out into the wilderness and hoping to find what we're looking for. Hmm. I mean, we might I... waste several days just walking around instead of going directly there if we have the right information from here. I, I actually... So, you know the... The tomb 
the area that Delilah was talking about in her books. Well, I've already been there. So... I am pretty sure I can find again where it is. How many <laughs> this is assuming days? Yeah. The landscape doesn't shift. Yeah, true. How many days would you think that would take? Well, the last time uh, I went through the mountain directly from Bosoma, but uh, I don't know, maybe a couple of days through through the rest. Survival check. You have to keep in mind, even as a rogue, you don't move nearly as fast moving through this area because you have to be very vigilant, very careful, yeah. sometimes stop, sometimes walk completely around phenomenons that are happening in the area. It could be two days. It could also be a week and a half. Uh, so it could be two days up to ten. It depends well, on the weather, it depends on the area. It depends on the yeah, or whether we like it or not. Uh, if that's the case, then we'll end up facing the rust rains and lightning storms and metal what. So, so that's a point to consider at least. But, hmm, I mean, if you're really focusing on the main issue of that, it's better to set off once you're uh, prepared with supplies. If you truly want to discover this whole, air, she does the fingers air quote thing, cult thing, that would take a lot more groundwork and a lot more time here rather than just a passing interest and whether you like it or not it's better to not be too involved in anything that involves the garrison since it's a thin line to thread I, and well I sort of agree but um, anything I think well if we're trying to assemble these pieces of the uh, of the coconut uh, we um, might have to look into the garrison and this cult at some point anyway it certainly seems like they have some sort of connection to this thing and if like the man said that they have this hand then well considering like uh, over half of their people were disappeared or something it's a safe bet the thing is not even here it's probably where you all plan to head mm. it could be so how it with so go ahead. Nah, go ahead. Kyle, how sure are you that you can find this place? Ten over twenty. I mean, my uh, once we cross the rest and we are north near the mountains, I shouldn't have much issue to find that place. Uh, it's just like the higher probability is to get lost within the rest. Hmm. And then is it is it worth it to try to maybe follow our coconut friends from a safe distance as they find it and use your knowledge as backup? Uh, 
Yeah, but it means that we need to find those coconut cultists beforehand. We we have intel on a couple of them already. I just don't want to yeah. be on the way there and then find out that we're both in the same place at the same time. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, knowing the place, it's not a good place for them. <laughs> More than there, it is for us. Mm. Well, except they are like specific deals with coconut that make the place an happier place, but... Uh... Yeah. All right, well... I'm happy w- with whatever we choose to do. I uh, just want to get things moving quickly. True. Yeah, if we truly wish to journey, we better set out when the weather's calm so we have a lot more confirmation on our peace and how we adapt towards the traveling in this hostile area. Since I'm sure most of you are not familiar with this area well enough to uh, have a somewhat relaxing trip at this kind of nice weather comparatively to the uncommon happenings right well uh, let's decide then which is it all right everybody type out in chat which one you would prefer if it is a tie then I will roll a die and we'll go with that one. Do you want to be stalkers or do you want to be leaders? All right, we have two for stalk. Three for stock. All right, y'all. You're about to prove exactly why expertise and stealth is so fucking good in 5e. <laughs> Do you we're, that? <laughs> we're bean stocks. Yeah. Oh, I hate you all so much. Uh, expertise and stealth, pass without a trace, 40 average in, in the bloody stealth check. Uh, just so everyone knows, I'm giving up the uh, scabbard of weaving proficiency if anyone wants it. Weaving. And I'm giving up the. Um, like basket weaving? Uh, like, Blindlessness. Well, yeah. Weaving tools. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's no, a tool no, bag no, augment. I mean, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you gain proficiency in weavers, which means you can fix flags, pants, clothing, weave baskets, yes. But, you know, there's a lot more application, and it is a very good skill to have. I don't care what anybody says. You can make it feels like booties. we could get a bunch of leather scraps and weave together some of our own non-absorbent cloaks with them. I, I actually uh, am proficient <laughs> in leather work, too, so I could do it we as should, a leather worker. Yeah, and we should also have a banner for the Dream Team. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the weavers has to go into not armor specifically, not armor, not mm. shoe. So, so it can go into spell the... focuses, boots, Scabber? trinkets. I mean, it's I'm not an augment, is it? It's a it's a scabbard. Well, the augment no, is no, in it's the an augment. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're just attuned to the scabbard to gain the benefit. Because originally okay. it had returning right. in it, which I'm not sure which of you has mm-hmm. returning right now. No, we treated we, it we in. Changed it. Oh, yeah, you got rid of returning. One of the best augments. I know, right? Dagger, dagger. Uh, well, I'm taking the blindness and deafness uh, thing from Kale and I'm putting it into my amulet. Very well. Uh, Is anybody I'm taking weaving or one. are you putting it into the party loot? I'll put it in part of it if no one's taking it. Very well. Are you editing? Uh, yeah, I'll do it. Okay. Um, 
just uh, I'm adding the blindness deafness thing right now. How does that work again? Is it once per day or how is the? It's a once per day casting of the spell. Uh, concentration comes from the augment itself, not you, and casting yeah. comes from the augment, not you. I would I would take the weaver's tools, but like so, thinking about it, if a thing is selling for one hundred gold pieces for a non-absorbent cloak, that's like fifty gold pieces for material because you generally double it mm -hmm. for the cost of, and it takes it like each long or day downtime spent crafting is just five gold pieces worth. It. So we we can't do it by tomorrow. It would take ten days to to craft one and the no materials. So. Well, it's uh, a common magical item, so it takes four oh. hours to craft one. It's a common magic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah it, then it's, I'll, a, I'll... it's it's on par with the cloak of bellowing. <laughs> oh, cloak of bellowing, or a, or a yeah. potion of healing. Uh, yeah, then I will I will take the scabbard and attune to it, and I'll I'll make my own absorbent cloak. Uh, well, for the rest Kreeve, of the day. Creve, Creve, are you right. keeping the scabbard for the slot? Oh, are you taking the? Uh, no, oh, shit. Cool. Oh, fuck. oh shit! Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> My phone. I'm just gonna put you on silent. Jesus. <laughs> sorry about that. That was a very. Uh, it was super. It was wow. a lot. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> but Kreef, what were you saying? Are you keeping the scabbard? Or uh, no, you can have the scabbard. Okay. So yeah. And you're also uh... getting two bolts of cloth if you want them. One red and one white. Oh, thanks. Mm. I'll figure also, out something to do with those. Reese, keep in mind you have to be attuned to each masterworked item you have. The scabbard mm -hmm. is a masterwork scabbard. Yeah, I have I have attunement space for it. Cool. I only have only one masterwork, so maybe two. You only have um, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, do you have both of them in the same item? I thought they yeah. were both in different items. I put them both in the bow. Can the one go into a bow? I'm not sure. Uh, I have an empty slot in the bow and one slot in the bow, and that's the only masterwork one I have. And then I have the two uncommon one slot ones. Uh, Glamoured has to go into your armor. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, so you're attuned to two of them. The bow. Yeah, then I still has have a two the other slot. one. Yes, yeah. okay. I'm just making sure we keep in mind because Glamoured only works in the armor it's in. Yeah, yeah. Um, about so, yeah. the bluntness, stiffness thing, did you say it had its own DC or was it. By it does have its own line. DC. All right, yeah. And that was 15, I believe. Or... Uh, let's yes. look at... Oh, yeah, he had it written down. So, yeah, 15. Yep. Sounds right. All right. All right, so everybody makes your trades and your swaps. And Reese, you now know the intricate design of different clothing and pants and... For the person who doesn't need to change their outfit ever, you could make a great outfit. Honestly, this is just going to make my glamour weave even more realistic. So, like, yeah, it's it's on it's on point. Uh, I'm going to spend some money uh, on um, craft or uh, leather scraps to craft a non-absorbent cloak and spend the rest of my day doing that, I think. Okay, so uh, it's going to be 50 GP for, per one that you need mm -hmm. um so how many of these cloaks are you making celia i forget did you say that you wanted to already have one that you bought for 100 yeah okay i have there to go, go back so. to my home to get it first but yeah that's fine uh so you have to make two more of them reese which means eight hours which is a complete day of work <laughs> only in fantasy um <laughs> it's fine but yeah uh you buy the necessary materials yep um and i can oh, spend the 50 gold pieces for mine um but whoever i'm making the other one for uh Kyle. i'm gonna need you to yeah oh, yeah i could always for that. yeah just take it from the party loot easily yeah, you can also have the uh, weaver's tools uh that i got earlier oh thanks they also yeah, weigh that helps. Uh, five uh five pounds yeah all right so kyle remove 50 or are you still editing ilborn uh, one sec. If you're still editing, just subtract another 50 GP from it. Uh, no, I'm not editing right now. I'll, All right, uh, then somebody it. subtract 50 GP from the party loot. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing um, it. Uh, and I'm changing also who has the augments. So Creed has this one. And Riz yep. has this one. Yep, 
And after a day, the two of you can successfully get your proper non-absorbent quality ponchos. They are large enough to fit over top of the majority of your legs. They fall around the bottom half of your calves above your ankles as they are supposed to. So the only thing that will be coming in contact with rain is anything that you move outside of the poncho or your boots. However, if your boots aren't metal, it's not really that big of an issue. Oh, Vorvik needs one as well. Well, so I have in uh, I, we have in the uh, in the party loot a huge sheet of basilisk hide that we were keeping and that I was planning with the laser work tools to turn into a protective cloak. Would a basilisk hide made cloak cover from? Did you tan it? I did. Okay. okay, if it was tan, then it's still good. Um, that's something that if you want to make a basculus hide cloak, that's something that actually does take like a week. Okay. Yeah. It's very strong, sturdy material. It would definitely be non-absorbent. I mean, basculus hide is heavy, hefty, strong material, but it's not something that you can do simply overnight. However, remove another 50 GP so Rory can get his, because honestly, he's the one who needs it the most. Um, yeah. yeah. He has, like, three things mm -hmm. on his entire person that isn't metal. <laughs> <laughs> I but knew yeah. it. His T is metal. <laughs> metal as fuck. The T-100. <sighs> so, anyways... You all wish to do the weaving over the next... You could complete it in one day, just know that you'll be exhausted the following day, Reese, or you can take another half a day to complete it. However, keep in mind, you guys need to find the hand first to know if you're going to be tra tracking after them. Yeah. Um. I'm going to work until people. somebody tells me to stop. <laughs> Sounds good. I just so, need to BRB real quick. I'm sorry. Yeah, go for it. Right. Who is going to go look for the hand then? I will. Anyone else? Uh, well, yeah, Alice, we... Alice is him because I'm right. familiar with the place. What were you saying, Kreef? Um, yeah, I was going to one. assist as well, but I have a... Um, uh, let's see. I have this thing. Oh... So oh, yeah. can I use that to sort of uh, try and get in, in touch with them somehow or, yeah. Oh, absolutely you could. You walk into one of the alleys where you see a handful of urchins. Here. Remove 5 GP. Mm-hmm. And are you trying to get in contact with them or learn their whereabouts? Uh, either learn their whereabouts. Happen. Yeah. All right. Uh, the urchin will walk you through town and show you exactly where their border of territory is and the buildings that they see them in most often. All right. Criminal contact is so fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, Kyle. Or I assume you would have brought Kyle and Celia with you while you do this, just to you know make it easier. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. The three of you go over to the southwest portion of New Haxon, and you start noticing little f little symbols of digits, finger digits. One, two, three, four, or five on all of the shops in this area, all of the homes in this area, discerning that this is widely their territory. Yeah, New AC, baby. Yep, yep. Um, as you are moving through this area, you start noticing, Kyle, that people have those symbols on their cloak 
like the clasp over top of it looks to be that of an open hand. What's and there's a... quite a few of them in this area. I'm I'm being racist here. Uh, what what's the race of the people? Are there many human, or can I see like people? I assume coming all, from the forest. All, all, yeah. So there's... I'm I'm not looking like weird as a draw no not at all in new Haxon, i mean the dominant race in this area is human as 20 percent of the population and everybody else fills up the other 80 so it's not even that that obnoxious i like i keep my trinket of the luxon hidden no. within my stuff so, you all begin noticing all of these individuals. Just from doing a quick lap around this area, you quickly discern about two dozen individuals that all wear that iconography. And publicly at that. Um, Kreef, can I... You're smoother talker than I am, so I prefer you to have it. But would you mind if I do this and I cast Minor Illusion to make appear the same uh, iconography around Creve's neck so that it can be represented as a person from this cult? And Creve being the smooth talker, I don't want to have to do this discussion as I'm not a social person. Would you mind? Mm, no, I wouldn't mind, but, uh, well. I have a feeling that, well, they would probably know who's part of the cult and who's not. It's not a, that big a city. Uh, Don't forget, they always, cults always have their own secret signal our handshake yeah so to say I, um, hmm. all right I, I i mean the idea is good enough but uh i think we might need to know more before we attempt something like that okay and i cut the mana vision there is no but, um, but of course uh, maybe we could uh, abduct one of them and uh, have a little chat. Are there any yeah. like uh, shopkeepers with those class on them as well? Um, to discern that, you'll have to like engage a bit more with the group and go into shops. Oh, but the, if you wish I to mean, do that, you can. Yeah, I, uh, so there's no like you know the roadside. Tents or whatever. Uh, around this area, no. The homes, the businesses, the shops are all marked with it, but the individuals tend to stay inside. Where you were at was towards the center of New Haxon, where everything happened. So, yes, they have the outdoor bazaars and such as that. Mm -hmm. Now, many of the shops do have open windows, open doors. Um, however, none of them are waiting outside for engagement. Okay, what's the You also shop take notice there? that there's not a whole lot of guards. Like as you did your lap around here, you saw two guards. Damn. That's bad news. But uh, what's the nearest shop to us? Uh a nearest shop is a um a horse hoof making blacksmith. Hmm. They make the nails for wagons, and they make the hooves for, or the uh, short horseshoes for horses. Hmm. So, do you all wish to engage in the conversation with them casually? Well, I'm sure we can try. I mean. Uh... First, we should have some idea what we want to accomplish with uh, this conversation. Do, do we want to 
try and get to know them, maybe try and uh, come off as potential recruits. What do we want to do? Oh, the easiest way is just finding out generally what they are and try to look like a curious sponge that's interested in it. Right. I'm sure I can make them underestimate me or, or us for that matter. Maybe, well, we could, well, I don't know. Nah, find... yeah, let's find, uh, what do you call it, uh, a shop that's easy, easily familiar, like a clothing store or a, a, what do you call it, a blacksmith or something. Hmm. Take a bit of a walk. Uh, is there any nearby stores that are either blacksmith or something, or a clothing store? Uh, sure. There's a clothing shop around here somewhere. Absolutely. Mm hmm Just yeah, just casually saunter into the store, checking stuff out. It it does have the symbol on them as well, right? Uh, yes, all of them in this area have it. All every right. single one. Yeah. Yep. Then, yeah, we'll we'll pick that one then. All right, moving in by yourself. Uh, I don't know if they want to follow or not. <laughs> I'll I'll come with. Okay. I I stay outside and keep an eye. Very Suspic well. For suspicious behaviors and make sure that they're not trapping it. Right. Kyle, roll me a uh, perception check, please. All right. The two of you walk inside. A little bell. Ding, 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 ding. Right above the door. You see a, uh, a gnomish individual looks over at you. Fairly young. Male. Hey, you here to get a fitting or something? Uh, what kind of clothing do they sell here? Like uh, common clothes or like uh, fancier stuff? Uh, definitely common clothes, but you know, functional society clothes. Mm -hmm. Oh, coming here since you have such a nice collection. I'm just looking around for some newer clothes to replace mine that's been weathered by the storms here lately in the last time I traveled. Okay, okay. Well, uh, come on over here and I can start sizing you up and we can find you some materials. They course, leap course. onto a desk and they do have a standing area um, for you to go on for them to start measuring you. Uh, roll me a perception check, both of you. I'm just I'm just looking at Celia. <laughs> yeah. God damn. But anyways, 14. <laughs> as you uh move over there, Celia, uh he does not seem to have any of the hands iconography. Mm. Sad G. But yeah, while he's like measuring, I'll just casually like hmm. You business been good lately? Typically speaking, never that bad, right? Mm -hmm. Could always yeah, be worse. It seems, seems really different here than the center part of town. <laughs> yeah, different strokes, different folks. You know how it goes. Yeah, true. Yeah, I've been seeing like lots of those symbols here. Anything overly sensitive about them, or is it important? Ah. Uh... More than likely, you want to keep your nose out of it. Yeah. Not no, a just... threat or anything. It's just, you know, Neat. head down, ears down, happy life. Mm. All that True. jazz. Just, I thought it was like some kind of a fashion statement or something since it's plastered all over the place. No, no, that's, uh, nope. That's just, uh, to make sure business is as good as it can be. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess it's part of the reason why everything looks pretty orderly.
Hmm. Right. In any you know, case, you have deceptively broad shoulders. Well, traveling for a long time takes quite a bit of shoulder strength carrying things. This can't be hell yeah. after all. Yeah, are you one of those uh, scavengers that go out in the old lands? Oh, no. I'm more of a wanderer since part of trying to make a living writing and composing you need to experience a lot of things instead of being cooped up in one place. Oh, that's good. That's good. Well, hey, I mean, if that's the life you want to live, that's the life you get to mm -hmm. live, right? That's one Indeed. of the perks of uh, living in New Haxon, right? Yeah. You don't have to worry about no one is... stepping on no toes. <laughs> and everything is always changing here, even the weather is never correct. <laughs> oh, jeez. You're telling me the other day uh, we had a shipment trying to come in and the uh, electric wind shocked all of the wool. Do you know what wool does when you get a little electric on it? Uh, oh, no. Terrible. Yeah, terrible. That, would, that would be hell to do. <laughs> yeah, now we have to treat it all. Mm. That sucks. You know, I once saw a woolly mammoth uh, with uh, that kind of hairdo, as it were. With the big poof. Yeah, it looks uh, yeah. It's quite the. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's hilarious, but the work you gotta put into it's just not worth it, you know? Oh. Well, <sighs> sure. But yeah. That's new accent for you. You can't yeah. even expect anything to go right. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Mm -hmm. uh, sound like you've been here a little while, eh? Mm hmm. Uh, you're obviously it's, not uh... from these quarters. What section are you from? Uh. Roughly around the north northeast side, since that's where they brought me there. No idea they why they told me to sit there instead. He kind of uh, straightens up a little bit. Northeast. Yeah, hey, don't worry about it. It's, I say living. It's not really living. I'm just squatting in someone's house. Roll of persuasion. Or a day or two. Or deception, if that's a lie. Ah, uh, no, it's a persuasion. Since okay. the Dwarven twins live there, the, one of the allies I know. It's a nice enough place, I see. I'm trying to just assist. Can I use my session inspiration? Well, you're getting assisted by Creed. Creed. Oh, yeah, that's true. Let's go. 22. 22. Damn, that sucks. Well, it's <sighs> average. All right. <laughs> well, so long as you're not uh, affiliated with all of them. I really don't want to deal with any of that drama, you know. Oh no, don't worry. The first few days, everyone assumed that. After after a while, they realized that I had jack shit to do with them. I rather no, just do my own thing. We don't usually get nice folk around here. Um, what if I give you guys a uh, twenty percent discount? Just being good conversation. <laughs> Sure, why not? Thank you. Uh, Thanks yeah, a lot. Yeah, of course. No, no problem. Uh, now, looking at your dimensions, um, depending on the quality of fabric you're looking at getting and the amount of time you need me to take it, we're looking at something close to uh, three silver after the discount. I'll get you set up with a nice little outfit that'll be a good Roman about. You know, nothing like uh, silk or anything, but, you know. It'll yeah, be true. Yeah, as long as it's functional and uh, tough enough. Yeah. You want to put yep, in the yep. order? Yeah, I'll put in two for it. I'll also put in an order for a little outfit for her. Oh, a third one? <laughs> he pulls out a needle and aims it at you. Ma'am, this person isn't giving you problems, is he? Uh, and I by needle, it's like a years. large sewing needle in his <laughs> gnomish hands. <laughs> I, I tend to just ignore the plenty obvious advances. Don't worry about it. Anyways. Yeah, uh, go ahead, walk around the shop, pick out a few different bolts that you like, and I'll see what I can bring together for you, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, feel free. Yeah, and he, like, uh, looks I over just... at you, Creve, and just quickly... <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving her a present. What's mad about that? Yeah, yeah. Anyways, yeah. uh... So, to keep up your facade, you probably spend another 5, 10 minutes, hour if you yeah, want, picking I'll up. Yeah, I'll just pick up yeah. 
the what do you call it a uh, subdued color is like good comfortable cloths and then just pay the six silver at them okay now outside during this time Kyle you kind of find a nice little spot next to the building to you know hide in the shadows and just keep watch and then you hear something something you heard last night in the tavern a whistle And you look over and you see a nerdy looking human with glasses, kind of small, five foot one, five foot two, male, brownish hair, but definitely unassuming, just walking down the street, whistling as they move. He looks directly over at you, and just smiles. Does it have does he have the the uh, trinket? Um he does not that you can see, but he is wearing a large cloak that covers the bulk of his armament. I'll uh Wait for a couple of seconds that he go through, cast invisibility, and start tracking him. Okay, roll me a stealth check. Advantage, of course. Twenty-five. As you continue following after him. He walks around a couple of corners and uh, seems to be looking around town and, you know, watching people. Roll me an insight check, Kyle. I always have advantage to those because bullshit race. Yep. Twelve! It takes you about 15 minutes of following him to realize... Nobody has walked on the same side of the road as him. Nobody. Including the people with the religious iconography. And he seems to be looking into a couple of shops, and after he passes by, you see a handful of people almost give like a sigh of relief as you're walking up next. And after following for roughly 30 minutes in total, he goes over to a building towards the far side of town. This building has about an 80-foot gap of open area before a large, or sorry, a short um, stone wall that goes around it, sectioning it off, with a gate in the front that has two of those individuals with the uh, iconography in front watching he walks over towards the gates and both of them bow their heads and open the gate for him as he keeps walking how far am i as far as ways you would like i mean are those big gates that take time to be closed or uh, they leave it open long enough for him to get in and then close it. They don't leave it agape for a while. And it's not a gate that's made to support, like, multiple, you know, entries. It's, like, a gated mm -hmm. archway that allows one person. And by short wall, the wall is only about six feet tall. It is a short wall. Six feet tall, so it's, it's my... It's, it's smaller than me. Yeah. It's it's a small wall. And then an 80-foot gap over to the actual building. So, uh, I would like to get close to the wall. Okay. And sneak peek above the wall. All right. See what we're doing. Okay. Roll me a perception check. Okay. Eighteen. 
you look over at the wall and as he is approaching there is a shadow that moves over the door and the door opens for him and then you see on the inside something that you've only read about or have been told about from your family you see an individual standing there in the foyer of this small little cabinet and they have long gray robes that have this symbol on it and you recognize that as the symbol of the cerberus assembly An old man, gray hair, receded hairline that seems to have been shunted, very liver spot filled all across his face, neck, hands. And the individual walks inside and gives him a little bow before the door shuts by that same shadowy essence or creature, maybe. However, after uh, you make that realization, any, yeah. Are there any windows in the building? Not a single window in the whole building. I would like to take this opportunity, opportunity to jump over the wall and make just a quick turn around the building to figure out if there is any kind of entry. I'm still invisible. What's your passive? 19. Okay. You grab onto the top of the wall and hoist yourself up, and you notice runic markings on the other slabs across the wall. Do you still want to jump? Uh -huh. No. High passive saves your ass. <laughs> but anyways, with that realization, I think this is where we're going to end the session. Kai, welcome to the game. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Yay! Sorry we didn't get a whole lot of roleplay with you, but... We're at that sleuthy phase of... Oh, the no, it's thing. fine. I enjoy the sleuthing. As all this all is right. going on, you know, I'm just weeding. Yeah. And posing. You have to vote. Po when I pose. pose. I find a widow's walk somewhere <laughs> in the city and start using it as a catwalk. Of course. But anyways, yeah. players, thank you all very much for player. Viewers, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and consider becoming a member if you enjoy this content. We will see you all next time. Goodbye.